Uh, we are so fortunate tonight to have you in studio, and we have the Dr. James Kneller, MD. Welcome. Can you say hello? Hello, everyone. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> and he's so, he's going to project his voice so loud to the world to let them know about how they can have energy, like my energy. Your energy. Oh, wait, <laughs> let's give Lons a shout out because we went there for your birthday dinner last week and it's a local business and the food is great. Oh, thank and you. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. We had the best absolutely. birthday night. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so you got to give fun. him a shout out, supporting a local business. And it's a hotel too, right? Yes. So, it, yeah. And I'm friends with the owner, uh, Joyce and Ron. So, uh, yes, thank you so much, Chet, for me mentioning uh, Lons. We had great such a wonderful food. time. Yeah, great food. Chet brought me flowers. I got flowers from uh, my kids and cards and the dinner and just the best show and Dr. James's presence. <laughs> we were there. It was great. And I'm surprised you're still not trying to celebrate. Usually <laughs> you celebrate your birthday for like five weeks in a row. I celebrated so. this morning. Still celebrated. I celebrated yeah, last I'm night. I'm surprised the wine is still celebrating. Right <laughs> Did an <laughs> alien steal your body <laughs> or your skin? Well, that, that, that's okay. after the show chat. And, and <laughs> yeah. I also got a really special camera for my birthday. I was surprised with a very nice camera, which was very thoughtful and considerate. I just can't believe that that, that, that was such a surprise. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so many blessings, so fortunate, and um, we're here saving the planet. One Let's show at a time. time. <laughs> Chet, what does that mean? Um, well, it just means we're trying to spread positivity and you love. Know, love and good music. Well, Jafar, what <laughs> uh, songs have you been writing? Like, how have you been staying, you know, inspired oh through gosh. quarantine? Because right now, it's even, you know, things are starting to open back up a little bit, but there's still not the normal flow of shows. And mm. I feel like that's kind of where a lot of artists' inspiration comes from. True. So. That is so true. Um, this, you know, the whole quarantining process, at first it was all right. It was like, okay, I have time to work on my own, my own material, my own self music promotion and whatnot. But then it just started driving you crazy being stuck. And you're just, you're just like, okay, I know that I should be taking this time to self-improve myself but at the same time i'm also going crazy yeah. but i have plenty of time to write lyrics of like what i'm going through or feeling in the moment and i just kept going with that that flow of being like okay i'm still stuck here so i might as well just take advantage of this time and you know has it been positive for you yeah i mean positive and negative in a way because Positive, I got to work on myself. Um, negative in a way because I couldn't go out and gig as much as I used to, like go to restaurants or go performing at venues or whatnot. And I feel like Phoenix is a really good city for that. There's it a lot is, of um, venues out here. Yeah. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go. But like now, like those are limited to like just a few places that are allowed just to, you know, respect the social distancing rules and, and have certain limitations. It's just a struggle to try to get out there again, like with ease. Um, I want to go do more. I want going to go perform for people that want to be entertained. And you will. And yes. you will. And I will today. <laughs> so Jafar, do you want to work on your energy and improving your health and wellness and, and just, you know, learning how we can transform our bodies to just have a full energy life like Kinga? Like Kinga. <laughs> yes, 24 7. So, so Doc, can if you, you can give match us. Kinga, you're well on your way. Our show is going to be about that. So, so Doc, can you get, give us some starting points before we cut to a song and tell us what we're going to be discussing? So, we are going to be discussing the energy transformation program that we have been developing, helping people maximize their personal experience of energy, um, starting with very basic energy substrates that everyone. Um, thinks are the the whole story like your food your sleep your exercise your stress your job environment toxic exposures things of these na things of this nature but we're going to move well past that and start to incorporate some of the concepts that have come to us from um, quantum physics and our understanding of our own quantum aura. physics do you know what that means jafar do you know what that means chet quantum uh, physics yeah. i'm not so familiar mm. with the, the it's, topic it's like the physics of the particles on the smallest like Levels, Spectrum, like right, sub right. subatomic particles and subatomic the different particles. the different phenomena that uh, and characteristics that they possess, and those give the characteristics mm -hmm. to the physics in our world that we can see every day. Wow, Chet, I had no oh, clue what that was, and I on. thought I was just, just checking to see if Chet he knows everything. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so I'm trying not to everything. Stuff I just I'm always wanting to learn more. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 Doc, so quantum physics, did Chet hit it on the head? Did he hit the nail on the head? That is a great 
definition. Thank you. That was for <laughs> close a great spontaneous definition. <laughs> One property that I'm very interested in, I think we're all very interested in, is the concept of biocentrism, which is the thought that the universe, the physical universe that we live in, arises from consciousness and arises from awareness. So humans, us who have attention and consciousness, are actually nodes of animation for the universe that we experience. There is this notion that... Um, Can you dumb it down? I don't know really what you're saying. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> wait, wait, explain so, what you're saying. So there's the notion okay. that a star, okay, okay, thousands of light years away, okay. sent out a photon of light thousands of years ago. And you happen to look at that star and you receive that photon and you saw the star. Now, what quantum physics is telling us is that that star would not have sent out that photon thousands of years ago if your eye was not going to be there at that moment to receive it. Mm. It wouldn't have happened. So the universe does not happen unless there is somebody or something there to pay attention to it. Mm. In that sense, we are humans and sentient beings. Become, but what does that have to do with our creation. energy? What does that have to do with healing us and providing more energy? Teach us that. Well, we have to understand. Well, he's making a profound point first, so just let him go. <laughs> let him go. Okay. Keep going, No, I appreciate, I appreciate the direction, but we, I think, first of all, understanding that concept is very important. And that our, if, so then if, the, if our attention is creating the universe, then and the world that we experience, then that becomes a motivation for us to improve the quality of our attention, the quality of our experience, and the energetic interactions that we um, can have with the world around us. For example, your heart is an electrical organ, about 5,000 times stronger in point of fact from electrical standpoint than your brain. So every beat of your heart, this very strong electrical vector projects through your body across your heart, which is several inches long. And then what that creates is an electromagnetic field that surrounds you. And we can measure that with sensitive instruments up to sort of 10 feet away. Hmm. And what can happen, just because we're close, is if somebody were analyzing my brain waves, they could, they could isolate the electrical signature of your heart from my brain waves, meaning your very presence here is influencing my mind and how I think. Wow. Just because of your proximity. And it's even really? stronger if we are touching. Yes. <laughs> Does that give you more energy? It gives you more energy. Crazy energy. So understanding these interactions and how we have to, you know, we want to organize the energy in our bodies and unleash the energy that's in our bodies to improve our experience of the world around us because it is our attention, our experience of the universe that is in fact creating the universe. Okay. Yeah. So, so One, one so, thing I would uh, say is this time of year, I don't know if anybody else... I don't have seasonal depression, but I definitely have like a seasonal mood swing when it starts to get cold outside. And it's hard to like <laughs> force myself to stay active, but it's so important because I, I know you touched on exercise for a second earlier, but try to stay active, even though it's getting cold, like it keeps you so much happier. And I don't know, there's something about getting really qu high quality, like tough cardio, like sprints or weightlifting or, you know, something that's high intensity. Uh, it's so good for your mental health. It just allows you to release all your stress and tension. So, and so I would say that's my number one tip because I am like the energizer bunny. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always going too, and that's my number one thing. If all of a sudden I'm like, I feel low energy, it's like, oh, I didn't work out yesterday. It's always, I don't know, it affects my mood immediately. Mm -hmm. So lately, I've been working out two or three times a day if I can. It just makes me feel better. So. I don't know. Maybe some of you are the same as me. <laughs> so that's more what I would expect from you because you are, in fact, an athlete. Yes. Well, I think everybody should try to be as athletic as possible because it's going to be good for their mental health. But you have actually gone to university on a sports scholarship. Oh, no, no, no. I got recruited for baseball, and I got into Cal Poly mostly because of baseball, but mm -hmm. I didn't end up playing at the collegiate level. But I played uh, – I won a state championship – uh, with my high school, Notre Dame prep, and, you know, that was a lot of fun. So, yeah, and I just have always, ever since then, I play basketball, I go on hikes. I just try to stay active because I just feel my mental health deteriorate immediately when I get inactive in 
at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Right. So so Doc, with your program, yeah. exercise is a, a huge component. Uh, can we discuss all the other vessels of how we're going to create this energy? Well, first of all, I would, like we talked about, I'd start with an individual's needs inventory. I'd want to understand how they're exercising, understand how they're eating, how they're sleeping. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Like most people probably could not keep up with my workout reg regimen because I'm a 24 year old, you know, ex athlete and all that stuff. I used to play football and everything too. So um, I definitely agree that my regimen is probably not the same, that everybody should get on that. I'm not recommending it for everyone. So, Doctor, you're saying right. everybody has to be individual and everybody has a different program for this transitional energy. We have to individualize and we want to take everyone where they're at. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you are you're very healthy. Yeah. You are. Highly trained athlete. You are, I think, how tall are you? Six, three, six, three. And yeah. how much do you weigh? Two twenty five. Right. So you're seriously in the athletic world, but you know, we want to be able to, we want to be able to help anybody. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm a physician and I deal with people who have major health problems the majority of the yeah. time. And I also want to be able to reach out to these people and help them mm -hmm. and they need to have a place to start mm -hmm. and we need to take them from where they are mm -hmm. and take them to the next level mm -hmm. so that they have the, the, um, energy levels that they're mm -hmm. capable of. And that's going to be involve them um, functioning with the fitness levels that they're capable of and improving. So we're interested in taking everyone. And I mean, in cardiology, the majority of my patients are 70 and 80 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and then we have sixties and fifties and I'll see people in their twenties, but really it's that older, um, uh, generation that feels life a little bit slipping from them. Mm -hmm. And they're the folks that we want to grab and help and lift to the next level and help them extend the quality and quantity of their life in, um, the most important way possible. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I want our listeners to understand that you, uh, that you're an ex, uh, excuse me, a cardiologist that does physio. Like, I'm a heart rhythm cardiologist. But, but uh, we call it electrophysiology. Electrophysiology. Yeah. Okay. Heart rhythm. So you take what's the procedure? You take uh, what do you do? You take the cords up to the heart. Yeah. So we there's two categories of things. One is we do cardiac devices. But, but like, what's say, that procedure where, those, where you take those tubes and you stick them up their legs and it goes all oh, the way goodness. up to their heart? What oh, do you call goodness. that? Okay, so that's <laughs> a surgery. <laughs> but, but explain it because it's very, it's very intricate and very uh, we, we, like scary. I, I wouldn't want that done to me. <laughs> in, in ways that surgery, we, kind of, we, we tend to shy away from the word surgery. We call it an invasive procedure. Okay, invasive, so invasive procedure. procedure because okay. we're going into your body and we're manipulating things in your body. But and you go through the groin and you stick those tubes up and it goes way up to your heart, right? That's right. <laughs> usually, from the, usually from the veins of your groin up to your heart with catheters. Like I say to my patients, they're little thin tubes like spaghetti noodles, but they're very electrically sensitive, and we can position them in the heart to study people's heart rhythms. And then with one of those catheters, we can zzz, heat tissue and disrupt tissue, the goal to interrupt abnormal heart rhythms and normalize heart but rhythms. But why do the tubes come from down there? Why doesn't it start up here? Like, why don't you go straight in here? Why does it go straight down there through your groin? Access. Access. <laughs> okay, because that nice seems big, scarier. Nice big vessels, and it's a straight shot. But I agree, it's a little bit far. It, I mean, it's pretty scary, because I have a little tiny bruise right here. And, and Doc was like, that's not a bruise. King, that's not a bruise. <laughs> oh, you goodness. should see the bruising I see. Oh, oh, I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, before we get to a song from Jafar, um, what is just, like, one general way a lot of people could... Like, or one routine people could add to their daily lives that could, you know, drastically affect their energy levels. What, what would be the first tip? Like, would it be sleep? Would it be stretching? What would it be? Earthing. That's a good one. One tip. I am, I am. Or one thing people could add to their everyday regimen. Just, you know, something that takes five minutes or 20 minutes, but it'll give people more energy. I'm going to pick earthing because we don't talk about it much. Okay. That's having your skin in physical contact with the ground, preferably if, if the ground is wet or your feet are wet. So Doc Physi talks about how like when you go to Hawaii, you, you feel so good because you take your shoes off, you're walking at the beach, you're walking on the grass, and you're earthing. Yes. So is, that, is that earthing? It's earthing. Okay. One word for it is earthing. So earthing. Okay. One, th one thing we've lost is that we've put rubber soles on the bottom of our feet which is an electrical insulator. So we've electrically separated ourselves from the earth. And we may not come in physical contact with the earth for weeks and months at a time. 
So what do we do when we start to feel all agitated and, oh, I need a break, I need a break. You end up playing fly to Hawaii. What do you do in Hawaii? You take off your shoes, you walk on the sandy beach in the wet sand, which is wet with salt water, which has salt, which is a strong electrical conductor. And so there's these ground currents in the earth, telluric currents, lots of electrons, and those will flow through your skin into your body. Our mm -hmm. bodies accumulate too much positive charge as a function of oxidative stress and just our own metabolic reactions. So we're always hungry for negative charge to neutralize those things. That's the principle of an antioxidant food. It provides electrons to neutralize positive charge. But we should be getting this also from the ground through the process of earthing. And that's one of the reasons why when you go camping or on a vacation, you feel so good because that's you get... an excellent tip. I love it. So there you go. And also another added benefit of you know, doing that 20, 30 minutes walking barefoot every day, it's going to build up the small muscles in your feet. A lot of people have plantar fasciitis, which is where your the muscles uh, that line your foot basically all get kind of like twisted and almost knotted and they have no flexibility or strength anymore. And if people walked on the beach more, they would have a lot less plantar fasciitis and foot problems that can lead to knee and hip problems. A lot of people's knee and hip problems originate from plantar fasciitis and weak foot muscles. Would you agree with that, Doc? I think, yeah, absolutely. 100%. So yeah. I just want to tell you guys that when I hike, there's a, a, a guy I see often, and he hikes barefoot. He, he hikes barefoot. It's really... Yeah, uh, it's so good for the... The lower your muscles are strong, like calves and feet, if those are strong, the likelihood of you having a knee or hip problem go down 100%. The stronger your base, the stronger everything above it's going to be. Well, I couldn't do that. I, I, it would hurt my feet. You'd have to build up to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I wouldn't recommend going out barefoot up Camelback <laughs> right now if you've never... Yeah, that'd be a little I can, extreme. I can do the beach, and I can do the grass, but... Oh, yeah. So, so should we cut to the song, Jafar? Let's do it. Can you give us yeah. some energy? Can you give us some music <laughs> energy? Right? Oh, goodness. Um, give us the energy. Wait, for, wait first, uh, tell our... Uh, followers and listeners where they right, can go follow right. you of course. And <laughs> listen to you on Spotify and everything um, like that. Hi, my name is Jafar Pullen. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and TikTok at Jafar Pullen. It's J-A-P-H-A-R um, P-U-L-L-E-N and I'm on all those social media apps. I'm I'm trying right, right now to release my song, Crazy Simone. It will be hopefully on all platforms as soon as I can get it done. I'm having my last session in the studio coming up soon. <laughs> and I can't wait to release it and for you guys to hear it then and actually today. <laughs> so here we go. This is my um, first song that I like wrote. It's called Show Some Love. I do hope you enjoy it. Do I feel like this was a mistake I don't know how much of this I can take Can't comprehend Do you want me to leave or to me you have to tend? I don't know uh, Let me stop thinking on replay Whether or not you're in my future days If you wanna hit me up you want to cover up it's what you got to do show me some love i met you at the club so what's up what's up let me take a pause give me a second were you for real or were you just messing around i feel time wanna rewind you're looking to bond do you mind if you could give me a sign you know just buy show me some love i met you at the club so tell me what's up Tired of waiting, so girl. 
girls are playing. I want you in my arms tonight. Come on, I'll treat you right. Baby, you're out of sight. If you want to hit me up, if you want to cover up, it's what you got to do. Show me some love just show some show some love love just show some just show some love may you have the glow so what's up what's up Okay, Doc, I think we get energy from that. That's incredible oh, music. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, his voice like resonates with my soul. Ah. Wow. I had to go to the bathroom, but I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. Yes, wait, I just... So how old were you when you wrote that? So I didn't oh, my interrupt God. you. No, no, Sorry. no, 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 no proud, no proud. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I know, no, I'm sorry, I use my hands a lot. I'm, I love it. I love it. You're so much fun. Bunch of hand it's gestures. It's so fun having you here. Um, so... I um, wrote that song when I was 17, I believe. Um, yeah, that's insane. So <laughs> talented. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I wrote that song, and I was just, like, thinking about a relationship that I had once with um, this girl. And I met I, – it's the funny thing is I met her at Drama Club. So I was just like – I was like, I, can't, I never been to a club. I'm, eight, I'm 17 years old. Um, so I was just like, well, just show me some love. I met you at the club. Drama Club. <laughs> so what's up? <laughs> what's up? So I was just – I was just writing that song, and I just didn't know what to feel. I just – just did what I was feeling at that moment. I just wanted to feel appreciated in the moment, but you know, things happen. Things. Well, just the change. melody is so. I don't know, it's complex and soothing. It's crazy. Know, you were seventeen when you wrote that. Like the way <laughs> and the voice lyrics are so around. much fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh Amazing. my god. Yeah. I love. I love the verses. I love it all. <laughs> Jafar, oh. when are you gonna go to um, American Idol or Oh my the god. Voice? Oh. Well, no, he should just like keep releasing his music it'll <laughs> blow up um, he doesn't need to go on one of those shows uh i that's actually true. When, when was it? it was like t two years ago or so i auditioned for america's got talent um you know what i think it was i didn't have a sad enough backstory <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very cheerful person well, but um and you those shows it's like a gatekeeper to art like that shouldn't be a aspect a with art. exactly yeah, yeah you should just be putting out exactly what you feel and you're in yeah. truest interpretation I, yeah. I partook in that the whole audition process went to california auditioned and waited like hours and hours of just waiting to go and audition in front of the producers and whatnot mm -hmm. just to get that first step in and it just didn't go as planned um I, well, well, God's plan is going to be better for you. Right. Yes, God's indeed. God's plan is going to be better. I'm not even worried, Jafar. You are a star right now. Thank you. We love your yeah. music. We're so glad you're here. Uh, do we get to hear another one uh, a little bit down? Yes. Okay. Yes, you would. I have two more songs for you guys today. No. Oh, okay, great. And maybe we can... It, we're also celebrating Doc's birthday. <gasps> what? Yes, 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 yep. We're oh celebrating Doc's birthday. Well, <laughs> you're, let's pick Jafar. Turn seven, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got to sing a birthday song. I got so, you. I got uh, you. As we're here saving the planet, one show, show at, at a time. time. Well, let's pick Jafar's brain a little bit about like what do you do like whenever you're feeling like maybe you're about to get sick or something. What's your regimen for like Ooh. you need your immune system to get back in check or you need more energy or wind in your sails. You got a show gotcha. coming up and you need mm -hmm. you, know, um, you need to feel extra spunk. Yes, <laughs> and tell the doctor and ask the doctor any like, questions that any you might other have. Other things that I could do. Um, yeah, what I do. Oh my gosh. But when I'm feeling a bit like down or a bit under the weather, I always resort to my number one drink is tea. Like I nice. drink plenty of tea. Like it makes no sense. I'd probably go to the bathroom more than I should. Black, <laughs> black tea, green tea, um, green tea, um, ginger tea, lemon tea, I, like all the teas. Doc, um, is that good for us? Absolutely. Like, green tea, especially. Wow. Because like it's Great like herbal and earthy and yeah, yeah, I I try and like it's really great for my my vocal cords because like it warms them and makes them sit right. And when it comes like to the opposite, which is like dairy and like, oh, ruins me completely. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I won't never ever be like, that. let's go get ice cream. And I'll be like, I have a show in 30 minutes. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> 
So I never thought of that, Derry. You should not have before you sing. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Man, it just it coats your um your yeah yeah, and it just makes it feel all mushy and and uh you just won't do your best. So I always That's like so resort to you know just water sometimes if it's necessary. But tea is always my to go to drink when it comes to like getting right. myself back so, together. So doctor, that is that something you would recommend for your patients to have green tea? I think green yeah green tea's got. Tremendous antioxidants. The health benefits are great. About the third of the caffeine of regular tea. So if you're not, if you're trying to avoid caffeine a little bit, that's helpful. Mm. Again, so, we just have to ensure quality, quality, quality. Because cheap teas, like cheap coffee, right, can, have, can yeah. have molds and certain toxins. And then you do have to be mindful of the quality. The quality of everything you put in, in your mouth yes. is, is like what that's the most important the organic, organic. organic teas is definitely important. Everything it's organic, straight leaves, yeah. and high quality. He says that about everything. So next question. Uh, uh, Jafar, uh, yes. I want the doctor to tell you about magnets. Do you know anything about magnets giving you energy? Magnets? Um, no, I did. I never thought that like magnets could like affect like your like how you. Chad, have you heard of that? Um, I've heard like. Oh, look some, at that. <laughs> uh, there we go. There I've we heard go. some people supporting like both sides of it, but you know, in general, mm -hmm. anything that could have a positive benefit that has no negative side effects, why would you not, you know, try that? That's the way I look at anything that's like that, you know, and everybody can find their own combination of things that works the best for them. Because, so, yeah. uh, because uh, magnets, uh, they, they help your cellular compounds or what, what does it do, Doc? Yeah, so magnets are something I've experimented with. Um, there's evidence that the magnetic fields that we're exposed to naturally um, can have some powerful interactions with our physiology. Um, well, if you look at a compass, it affects the metal in the compass, and there's metal in your body. So it's almost a no-brainer that our bodies have uh, the metal in our bodies is affected by all the magnetic fields around us. Oh, so, thank you. I mean, it would make sense that there would have a direct effect on your energy or something like that if you're not aligned properly so, so, so is that kind of the like basis behind it or what is the like the science behind it yeah I, that's the end point of it. here's a fascinating example so uh, when you are quiet respiration you are breathing you're in a state of meditation or you're just fully relaxed on average we breathe one once every 10 seconds or 0 0.1 hertz what determines that rate of quiet respiration it is in fact a magnetic field, and it is the rate of solar wind collapse across the magnetosphere in the very outer atmosphere of our planet. So solar winds from the sun, waves of charged particles are arriving about once every 10 seconds, and they're collapsing across the magnetosphere of the Earth and creating this magneto tail behind the Earth. And it's felt that that magnetic field, which we can measure, is in fact what's influencing your res respiratory center and draws you towards that rate of one breath every 10 seconds when you're relaxed. So it's wow. us being tuned to our solar system, our universe, in ways that most people are totally unaware of. So, so, so that, Doc, that, that's you an example way of, okay. interesting way of how you can be affected by magnetic fields. So, so do you recommend that Chet goes and buys a, a magnetic duvet for his girlfriend and they sleep under magnetic pillows like you're sleeping under? Yes. Okay, so, so he says magnetic you wake up. Magnetic pillows? Yeah. <laughs> Magnetic bracelets like Robin just showed us. Yeah. We've got a magnetic got a bracelet magnetic right bracelet. here. These are new. Uh, but, but, but Doc actually <laughs> sleeps with a magnetic wow. blanket, pillows, duvet. Uh, what does that do? Doc, what does that do? So it's restorative. Sleep is something so sleep is something I'm passionate about. I believe in sleeping with your head east west as opposed to north south. Um, you know, we need that seven to nine hours a night. It has to be totally dark. You don't want noise. And if you live in the city, you might want a white noise generator. We cannot interrupt our melatonin cycle. So you want to avoid the blue screen of your iPhone, whatever. Don't look at it late at night. We need to get that um, high quality sleep. Other things that you can accomplish while you are sleeping is one is, is grounding. So you can sleep with electrically grounded sheets or blankets that you plug into a wall socket that's appropriately grounded and you can undergo the process of grounding, like you're walking on the Okay, I don't understand that. How are your you sheets are grounding? How are they grounding? They're special, so they have electric fibers in them, metallic fibers that then come to a point of electrical connection that you then plug into the wall. I'm curious about something because that bracelet, I wear it every day and it gives me energy, but there's been a couple of times where I've fallen asleep with it on and or I forget that I have it on, but it keeps me awake. 
So you're talking about you can use magnetics to put you to sleep. So maybe that bracelet has a more concentrated magnetic field than what you're talking about because you're saying that I can sleep with magnetics yeah. to balance myself out. But the thing is with that bracelet, it's so powerful that when I wear it all day, I have energy. And well, this is, my, <laughs> this is what I call my receptor hand. With, if you know anything about stones and rocks, you have a receptive hand. If you put it in, that's where you get the most spark in the receptors. Oh. So I've learned a lot, let me tell you. But, you know, with that particular stone, it's a hematite, and it's magnetic and very grounding. Wow. And when I wear it every day, it gives me this extra oomph. And I don't drink coffee. And I have natural energy from it. But when I, I've fallen asleep with it by accident, but mm-hmm. then I'll wake up and it keeps me awake. So I'll have to remind myself to take it off. So is it just because there? this one is, I, I think it's probably because it's all around me, but you're saying that you can do it with pillows and sheets and it's more of a grounding effect that will help you sleep. So it must be like, a, I would call like a lesser grade magnetic. I, I don't know how else to call it. Mm. I mean, can you, I, I'm, just, I'm just curious because I've had trouble sleeping with the magnetic bracelet on. That's wow. a good question. So but, what's the answer, Doc? Well, I think the first very, I think the first interesting thing is that it has an obvious effect on you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm very so, sensitive to energy. So you are very sensitive. And I like a, a lot of women I know, females tend to be, I think, more sensitive to these things than some of us guys. Right. So when I notice something that I'm like, oh, that's really real, you know, because I don't, not as sensitive. So I've, you know, recently um, ex- explored magnetic shoe inserts. And been and, and been blown away. Wow. Yeah, it feels like it feels like a magnetic pull down through my head, right through my feet, into the floor, and I love it. I ah. wouldn't wear anything else. I'm so, gonna try that. That sounds so cool. So, Chet, do you remember your grandma? Uh, grandma Emma would always wear magnetic bracelets. Do you remember that? Um, not she, really. There no. was a period of time there. Ask her. Ask your dad where, where she would wear magnetic bracelets, and she was into this whole magnetic thing, and she thought it really worked. Well, so, okay. ask her. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think she does, but um, yeah, she, she I, used to. I like bought a few of them. There used to be a stand at the mall where they had them, and I like bought them a few times, and I like noticed the effects for a few days, but then I felt like it kind of like wore off. So I think that might have been because of the quality of the wristband or something. Maybe lost its charge or something. But mm-hmm. um, I like definitely could notice a difference like in the short term. So maybe if I found a higher quality one, then I would be open to wearing that. Just ask the doc. Every day. The doc can get you on. So yeah, the where whole do you program. get? Where would you get like a high quality one from? There, um, I'm using a I'm using a, a um, company that's been around for a long time called um, Niken. Niken, it's kind of Japanese. N i k k e n dot com. They've okay. got they've got a lot of these products. So I've been using from those. So if I'm helping someone with their sleep routine, for example, and somebody needs to improve sleep, we're looking at all the ways somebody can maximize their sleep, I would strongly encourage them to experiment with, with magnetic technology. And you may have some, I mean, we all know the human body can do any weird thing. When you give someone a medication, you expect a certain effect, but you observe to see what's gonna happen because someone may have some idiosyncratic reaction that goes completely away you didn't expect. So. If you find out that you're wide awake because you're sleeping in magnets, well, obviously, that's not going to be a good sleep trick for you. But I think for me, I've experienced better sleep and have many examples of experiencing better sleep. So I would encourage somebody who is trying to improve the quality of your sleep to at least try it. So that's the process of being, you know, when you're in the consultancy role and you're working with an individual who's really trying to optimize all the areas of their life, you just need somebody to pay attention and say, hey, we're going to try this and see what happens to you. And if it's good, we're going to keep going. If it's not good, um, you know, we'll try something else. But we're going to work through that process. So, Chad, he could take you on as a patient and he will look at any any of the doctors you've been to. He'll he'll uh, assess everything and he'll give you what a program for all these uh, ways to be more healthy and uh, to improve his energy. Yeah, that's exactly what the program is. It's it's an approach to all these um, areas of our lives that are important with a with a array of strategies that we may implement for somebody based on who they are, what their medical history is, what their medical problems are, and try to implement these things in a way of getting a better result. And Chip, what you, are your thoughts on yeah. um, like cryotherapy and ice baths and uh, elevating Great question. elevating core temperature because. A lot of pro athletes are super into the cryotherapy mm-hmm. and whatever like LeBron James and Cristiano Ronaldo and all those guys are doing, obviously 
their bodies are performing better than anybody else in the world. And they all are doing, I think, like, at least, you know, weekly cryotherapy, you know, where they go into the chamber and I think it's nitrogen gas. That's uh, it's like negative 200 We're degrees. We're actually going to do a for, show on that for chat. Like two minutes. But it's supposed to be pretty uncomfortable, but the health benefits are supposed to be crazy. And then I've also been hearing a lot of health benefits from doing like extreme sauna exposure or like hot yoga, different things to elevate core temperature. Well, and Chet, there's the Wim Hof so, method. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of the Wim Hof method? Let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Well, uh, Doc. You, it, know, you, you know the Wim Hof well, Yeah, I just wanted to pick his brain a little bit about it. Well, the Wim Hof method is where you actually take like really cold showers and get in uh, the ocean and the lakes when, when the water, water's really cold and doc does that he, you have a lake house and um when it's cold you just jump in the water and, and get in there as long as you can be in there is that correct yeah i try to jump into the cold lake water when i'm up there unfortunately i don't have a lot of exposure so in the last year chat to your question um based on several on the wilmhoff method and several youtube videos of other people telling their experience i have started to do exclusively cold showers so i'm at the point where i try to take the coldest shower i can it's like in Arizona, you can't get very cold water yeah. out of your faucet, but you, you put it to the coldest setting and you just get used to um, getting under there. You get over the initial shock, and after a while, you're um, you really start to appreciate it. And you know, we know have we have athletes like you know who will take even if they're not doing the cryo thing, they'll do ice baths. Things like Almost that. everybody in the NBA and NFL at this point is doing cryotherapy. Mm-hmm. So like all wow. the highest impact athletes. So it must have you know crazy benefits otherwise they wouldn't be doing it because it's really expensive from what yes, i know yes it too. is expensive so it's hard to get yeah so it's okay. not available to everybody well i have good news chat well there are a few uh cryotherapy places in scottsdale it's expensive but you know if you're Chet. somebody that's rehabbing a broken leg or something an owner of, of one of the, the places here uh the clinics reached out to us and asked if they can come on the show oh yeah we're, be... we're in discussion now so <laughs> Yes. That could be a great upcoming show then. It, it will be. So thank you for yeah. mentioning that. So, so I, I am ask... a believer for the oh, record. Okay. I'm a believer in the cryotherapy. Okay. Um, we can take advantage of some cryo techniques um, just with cold showers mm-hmm. and maybe with an ice bath in your home, which mm-hmm. I think a lot of athletes, um, skiers and things like that also do probably the poor man's approach to cryo. But mm-hmm. I think it really um, minimizes inflammation in your body. And after you've had a hard workout, it, it um, minimizes the muscle damage mm-hmm. well, so I you think, have a faster recovery well, yeah, Don, more, can't more we just jump in the pool down. when it's freezing cold, when it's cold now like when it's 60 out can't we just jump in the pool why do we have to take a cold shower i think it's a great idea jump i think in the pool it seems easier to just jump in than get it seems in. easier <laughs> it, so it seems, then, <laughs> do you think there's also uh, the health benefits of raising core temperature also like the hot yoga and the hot saunas um there's a big trend towards that stuff being healthy now too like extended extreme saunas that's like actually starting to be really popular um but uh that's a great question i mean so first of all you know when you're when you're in when you're in this role you have to say that hasn't been evaluated by the fda so we don't have evidence we can't formally recommend yeah 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 yeah. that said do i believe it yeah i do believe it Mm -hmm. and there's actually an interesting um technology that we make available and that um i've experimented with um it's called the avison system and what that is, is you put your hand into this device that forms a vacuum seal around your hand, then it heats your hand, and with, by the vacuum, it increases blood flow from your body through your arm into your hand and heats it, so you return warmed blood, not too much warm, but somewhat warm, into your circulation, and the thought is that it can relieve certain back pains, it improves migraine headaches, it improves wow. wound healing, and so what it is, cool. the theory is that it's developing your microcirculation, so cool. it's improving b- pr- organ perfusion. So if you are, you know, not capable of hot yoga or some of these other techniques that are not available to you, that is a way to take advantage of that kind of therapy. I think it's the same thing. Interesting. And so I do tend to believe in it. And that particular device does have FDA approval for certain indications. That gives more credence to the whole theory of, of the body warming tech- technology. Interesting. Okay, Thanks so for Don, bringing that up. So you're eating right. You're sleeping right. You're doing the grounding methods. You're, you're, you're doing the magnetic, the magnets. Uh, you know, doing uh, the magnets. Well, well <laughs> so articulate. You're, you're, you're sleeping with magnets. You're sleeping with magnets. You're, you're eating right. That doesn't sound right. any better. Wearing or we're, we're, the bed and, and we're, we're, we're grounding. <laughs> so, so my next question is, uh, what, what next? What, what else is important? Uh, what about supplements? What about collagen? So that's interesting. Um, 
I am a big believer in nutritional supplements, even if FDA evidence is a little scant. I've had great personal experiences and personal ex and experiences of people around me, including patients who have come back to me with their results. And there are um, ways um, industry to get personalized supplement recommendations. So you have, you're 65 years old and you have a various, various health conditions and you're taking a number of medications. You can enter all this information. It can be analyzed by a nutritional team and they can propose to you a supplement regimen that should be best for you. Okay, well what and supplements- And then provide those for you with like morning and night packaging. So now you don't have a medicine cabinet that's full of supplement bottles that are all running out at different times that may not be dosed appropriately for you that you're taking because you heard this may be good or this may be bad, but you, you, you don't know how much to take. We can actually move past that to individualized supplement regimens. And I think that's um, uh, really important. Okay, but and what then, specific supplements? Like I know you, you recommend, Chet, you probably will be surprised to this. Jafar, you'll be surprised. He recommends lavender. You recommend that you take lavender for energy. Can you explain that? Lavender for mood. For mood, for yes. mood, for mood, yes. Yes, so every, a lot of people are- Lavender. Are subclinically depressed, not happy, seasonal affective disorder, kind of like what you hinted about. Yes. Um, <laughs> so very interestingly, um, there are studies in Germany, not enough to become major recommendations, but um, showing that oral lavender, if you take essence of lavender, you take it as a pill, that it oh. can have the antidepressant effects of several major prescription antidepressants, wow. such as Lexapro, Paxil, I things thought you like just this. meant the scent of lavender. Sorry? I thought you just meant the scent of lavender doing that. No, the actual scent, supplements. Scent is probably good. I mean, scent is probably good too, but you can actually take a capsule, 80 milligrams lavender. Huh. And, and so I've started doing this, and I have noticed a surprising elevation in my mood, you know, and I'm... You know, and me too. Less, Do you less, see my mood? I'm always <laughs> so happy. If you can prove on that, it's strong. I think I think that's been wine though, but <laughs> I, I had no wine. That's the one. I haven't had wine yet today. Shocking. No I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, that, that, that tip actually comes from pediatric psychiatrists who are using this to treat help treat depressed children. Oh. Yeah. So they don't want to expose kids to drugs, for example, and so they are using lavender supplements as adjunct to improve mood. Well, that's one thing. So that's where the recommendation comes from. There's certain commercial products that have been used in those studies and that you can buy off the shelf. Okay, then there's a sugar you recommend. Uh, some specific sugar. Can you tell us your secret sugar? Yeah, so something that, that I think Chet would be very interested in and that um, a cardiologist on the East Coast, uh, Stephen Sinatra, has advocated for quite persuasively in that I have tried are what he calls the awesome foursome of cardiometabolic energy, so muscle health. What is going to give your your cells the um, your muscle cells the energy substrates they need to perform well? And he's identified um, four things, and it's a little bit surprising. One is magnesium, not so surprising. Um, two magnesium, is, magnesium. Two is coenzyme Q10, which is what it's the enzyme that helps your body break and restore the energy molecule to actually. Can you repeat that one? Extract energy. I'll spell it for you. Coenzyme Q10. Yes. Oh, I know that one. Okay. 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 So is that one? Magnesium, coenzyme Q10. All right. Carnitine. Carnitine. Which is an amino acid very prevalent in meat. So hence carne, the name for meat. And what that does is your muscle cells want fat. They want to burn fat as opposed to burning sugar. Mm -hmm. So they want high quality fats. And the carnitine helps to shuttle the fat molecules in and out of your muscle cells efficiently. So they don't get bogged down with excess fat or fat metabolic products. So seafood, all types of meat have that then? It shuttles or? the fat. It shuttles. Tend to have high levels of carnitine. Okay. So then if you're not taking meat consistently or you want to avoid meat because in general <laughs> meat has other problems, you can supplement with carnitine, for example. Interesting. Okay, so if yeah. you're somebody that... you is vegan. You're that's vegan. really important. L -car carnitine. That's, car okay. that's important. Because okay. okay. they'll have a hard time getting the levels of carnitine. What about they, collagen? Okay, okay um, just one more. Because okay. I know you asked okay. about okay. is and that okay. is ribo sugar. Ribo sugar. Ribo sugar, ribo -sugar. sugar. Ribo is part of the energy cascade. Ribo so sugar. Everyone's heard of ATP, kind of the energy molecule. Yes. <laughs> the backbone of ATP, one of the structures in there is ribo sugar. It makes ribo up that molecule. Sugar. And that's a five carbon sugar. Tastes sweet like sugar, like glucose. Glucose is a six carbon sugar. So glucose, mm. six carbon sugar, it gives you calories, so it makes you fat. Um, or, or can't, but ribose mm -hmm. sugar, it's a structural sugar. It tastes sweet like a sugar, but it doesn't give you any calories. Is it in any of our food naturally? Or? It is almost in no food. And okay. your body makes it through a very slow and cumbersome metabolic process, which means it's very highly conserved in your body, 
which is fine when you're young and healthy, but if you are older or you have a serious health insult, you can burn through your ATP and kind of deplete, and it takes a long time for your body to replenish that ribose power, um, ribose sugar stores to rebuild the ATP molecules to give you the energy substrates you need to keep feeling better. And I personally feel that a lot of our recovery process is from diseases or illnesses, and we've all had them, is the process of your body rebuilding these depleted energy stores.